Welcome to anyone watching. This short video shows a prototype fuel panel that I have built for use with uh, DCS A10C and it also outlines its construction. As of next year I should have a small dedicated space where I can build my sim pit. So in anticipation of that I'm building a series of prototype panels using a mix of different methods and materials. That should give me the learnings I need to take forward into the larger pit. I don't have a background in electronics, so without that clear plan or knowledge right at the outset of each panel or project, it's a question of putting things together, making them work, and then correcting deficiencies, and then taking refinements from the one panel or project uh, into the next. All of the inputs from the fuel panel that you can see now are all achieved through the use of a keyboard encoder. Uh, the toggle switches and the push button switches are very straightforward with an activate and deactivate sequence. The receiver light is through use of a rotary switch and that means it does allow a range of motion in several key positions. It's not quite a full range of a pentometer but it's sufficient for what we need here. In operating the A10C, a lot of the missions will occur at night and it was important that the aesthetic is right. So you can see a test of undertaken here where the backlit panel is being used and you can see the, the effect of that next to what actually is happening in the cockpit. When the panel is installed as part of the larger console, the light emitted at the back there obviously will, will not be there, so you'll just get a very clear uh, transmission of light just through the writing, which is not which is actually better than it looks there. It's camera's giving it a little bit of glare there. The first thing to do is to choose your acrylic. So I use a 3mm opal acrylic, which I will clean, and I then sand it. You can see here an example of uh, a piece of acrylic on the left which is sanded, and a piece on the right that's not. When it's coarse, like the one on the left, the, the paint that you spray onto it will hold so much better. and it, what I have found is, uh, particularly when you're using the CNC machine, there's far less chance of bits of paint chipping away and leading to uh, unclear writing. I use a primer and give it three coats, and then following that and follow it fully drying, I then use uh, a black spray paint of a matte finish. I then move on to do my work around uh, my CAD and CAM file. I use Cut2D by Vectric, which is an amazing program, very straightforward to use, and it does combine the, the CAD and CAM functionality very nicely together. I start by taking an image of the panel that I want to create, and I copy that as a bitmap into uh, the Cut2D program as a layer and then on top of that layer I can then outline all of the uh, holes that I want to mount buttons through and toggles through and anything else and I can then add on as another layer any lines to be engraved and also any text 
to also be engraved. Your placement of the mounting holes may differ slightly to the way the buttons are outlaid on the, the picture of the panel because you have to account for uh, the, the room that the switches take at the back of the panel and they can take up a fair bit particularly where it's in tight dimensions. When you start using the cam functionality within the program you create all the tool paths with the profiles or pockets and when you've done that it lets you create an excellent preview like what you can see now which is very accurate to how it will actually look and that's really helpful when you want to check that the engraving of all the text it looks exactly how it should do. Before uh, beginning to produce your, your CAD file obviously you would have already looked at for all of the toggles and the switches which ones you were going to use to replicate what's in the simulator and what's on that panel so all of the holes created to mount them and all and, and also screw holes everything that you see there will have been thought through in advance and and you'll have got it to the dimensions of exactly what you'll need so what you can see there for the receiver for the lever um, on the right hand side there is exactly to the the lever that I happen to have to hand for the project and with your CAD and CAM files all completed you're now ready to check it over one last time to be sure it's all correct and can save it into G code and then load it into the Mac 3 program to then execute that and run it on the CNC mill Researching online, there's two main methods that people seem to be producing the fascias. The one is to use a printer and produce a very clear print of the panel. Some of them, they've gone on to then laminate them and backlight them. And the other method is to use a CNC machine, as you can see here. I'm really pleased with uh, the aesthetic that I've gained from using a CNC machine on the, the few prototypes I've produced. The CNC that I've used, I'm fortunate that my father-in-law is an engineer and he, he built this CNC machine himself and that he's enabled me to, to, to make use of that. So a big shout out, thanks Phil, much appreciated. Next time I use a panel in one of my air to air refuels, I'll give you a little salute. The key with the engraving that you can see here is that for the right the text it literally only takes a fraction of a millimetre off the, the surface which just removes the paint. And we can now take a moment after it's been run off the CNC machine to clean it up and have a good look at it and check that we're happy that none of the text has blurred or the paint's chipped away. And because of the way this piece of acrylic's been prepared it's come out very nicely. It's really important to understand exactly how the components you're going to install work and you can see that there's a slider and during some tests it looks like it's as simple as it lets a current through and then it doesn't in that it's a simple on and off. Um, but as we know sometimes a light bulb may have power to it but not be sufficient for it to actually light up. So when doing further electrical tests on the slider here, whatever position it's in, a current does pass through and the difference from one end to the other is literally a fraction of a volt. So it's important to understand how will this work with the keyboard encoder when that previously I've only ever used uh, switches and toggles that are simply on and off. Well, in running various tests with the keyboard encoder, um, despite that, it, it looks like any variance in voltage, whatever that may be, uh, was sufficient for it to, to recognise as an activation as either off or on. So I've been able to program that to work. So with the slider fully understood and tested and programmed, it's time to wire it up now so it can be installed as part of the panel. One of the refinements to take forward from previous panels I built was uh, better 
and clearer wiring um, and connections. So obviously beyond just this slider here which was quite easy to attach in the way that you can see for all of the other buttons and toggles we've got uh, crimp sets here, female connectors which are a much tidier way for them to be installed. Across all of the panels I've built I've purposely tried lots of different types of wires I've had some where uh, for my electrical panel I did, I actually used a very old style VGA cable. Um, in another panel, the countermeasures panel, I used a new style VGA. I even adapted a SCART lead um, because that holds quite a number of cores within the wire. But they do have drawbacks. Some of the wires are very heavy and bulky, not very flexible, put a lot of pull on the panel. But what I'm trying for this one is an Ethernet cable which carries eight cores and at the same time the cables generally are very flexible and not too heavy. It is important to check, particularly when you're buying lots of bits on a budget and like this cable here I bought for literally a few pence from a local computer shop, it's a used cable, is to make sure that you test all of your components and that they are working. So as you can see here I've got um, an Ethernet tester only cost a couple of pounds literally just got out of Amazon and I'm just checking that this uh, this cable does work fully before I start to use it in the panel I have found that it really is important to thoroughly test each item that you've installed in the panel as you go along because otherwise you get to a point where you finished your panel you connect it to your computer you've got some kind of problem with it and it's hard to diagnose exactly where that has come from. What I'm doing with this particular panel is I'm going to have an RJ45 socket uh, on the panel, well there'll be, a num there'll be three of them, and the keyboard encoder that the panel will be connected to, that will also have RJ45 sockets. So therefore it's modular and it will just be using an Ethernet cable to connect the one to the other. I have previously had it where a cable where you've got a lot of strands of wire within it, you've got a lot of cores, has actually had interference and cross connection carried between the wires within the cable. So I'm running a test here as you can see where one current's passed through a couple of the wires to illuminate the little light bulb you can see there. But then I'm then testing the other strands within the cable to ensure that there is no current or uh, noise or cross connection that passes um, from one to the other. So the cable can now be taken and cut to the different lengths that you need and you can strip the ends and start to um, attach the connectors that you've decided to use. Most of the toggles and switches I've got, I got from a company called Rapid Online. I tend to find they strike a good balance between the quality and the cost. With the first push buttons installed, as always, I undertake a few tests just to ensure that the connections are right and that everything's functioning as it should. With the push buttons installed, I can now turn my attention to the toggle switches. Sometimes it's easier to mount them and then attach the connectors after and for other reasons it's uh, sometimes easy to do it the other way around. I found that it has always served me well to have a journal and whenever I build a panel that can be used to record all of the details of it. So in this case I've documented um, all of the, the wiring so if I ever need to 
go back and do any other work on the panel in the future, I can be clear exactly what wire was for what and where it went to, and that does make it a whole lot easier if you ever have to do any other problem solving or maintenance on it down the line. To limit the number of wires used, I, I've used a number of shared grounds. So there's a, a few in number overall that are needed. Backlighting now needs to be added. So I use again a clear acrylic, three millimeters thick, that is mounted to the back of the fascia uh, and spaces are used. And I can then use an LED strip cut into sections which are ad attached via adhesive to the to the actual acrylic. The next step is to move on to soldering the connections. I have done some soldering on this and that is definitely something that I'll continue to practice to enable more refinements to be taken forward into future panels. The backlighting is used to really good effect and it makes such a difference to the panel and really brings it alive, particularly enabling um, the enjoyment of it during nighttime flying. The RJ45 sockets are now ready to be prepared and installed and it really does help make the panel uh, far more modular. This is a panel at the end of its construction. The only thing left to be added will be the actual handle for the fuel lever. The next step is to interface it with the computer, in this case uh, via a keyboard encoder. It really has been a joy to build and a, a joy to, to use during flight and actual missions. And for anyone watching the video, I hope that this was of some value and you were able to take something from it for your own simpit. Thanks for watching.